Am I audible? Yeah, oh, it's recording, yeah. So good morning once again. Let's just start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, God, for bringing us together once again to look into an institution you've designed. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts to understand uh, biblical guidelines and principles, as well as practical uh, instructions. So, Lord, that uh, when, when we are in this institution of marriage, we will, Lord, conduct ourselves, uh, be in relationships, Lord, that are honorable to you. Be with each one of us, even as we study and as we reflect on your word. I pray, God, that your word will be so deep in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. All right. So a quick recap about what we did last week. Marriage is a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Marriage is between one man, one woman. Marriage is a covenant, okay? God is the one who instituted marriage, yeah? He solemnized the first marriage, and so we learn about what marriage is through his word. Okay, anything else? It is something, it's an institution to be honored, all right? Marriage is holy, marriage is a covenant, yes. The first marriage was conducted by God himself. Wonderful, thank you. All right, great. So we'll move on to chapter 2 uh, in, in our books. And I'm at page 11. So if you're following through, you can, you can just uh, keep, keep that open even as we continue to discuss. OK? So we did, we did learn that marriage is something that God brings together. It's a coming together of two people, two individuals. Um, and these two people come into marriage, come from yeah, come from very different uh, backgrounds, right? They come from different families, different backgrounds. They have different personalities, maybe different cultures. They all they come together, and um, uh, they they also may be having their own spiritual walk with God. And when two people, the, this, this union should actually be something that is, that does the best, right? That brings out the best, uh, rather than something that brings out the worst. So uh, what, when, when two people come into marriage and uh, they're very different in the way that they, 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 you know, see things, they believe, they think, uh, there needs to be a preparation. You have to be, you have to walk into marriage equipped. You have to walk into marriage being prepared, right? For example, when you want to get into a job or ministry, you spend how many years preparing? How many years do you prepare? You're preparing right from the time you're four year old, no? You start to read, you start to do math, you start to study, all of that you do for 12 years and then maybe you get into a course. Or, so how many years you prepare to just be employed? But how many minutes or days do we take to prepare for marriage? Sometimes people just walk into marriage thinking that ah, it's okay. It's just about getting married and then we'll see, right? But Preparation in marriage is extremely important. So getting into marriage, you know, just like that or just for the fun of it or just quickly is quite an unwise thing. And that's why our focus today is on preparation. Maybe before we get there, we should ask, why are some of, what are some of the reasons people get married? The online students also can answer, yes. Expectations of a society, maybe your, the next thing after you become 25, 26 is get married. Okay, so that's one reason. Then what are the other reasons? To get a partner, okay, to get companionship, all right. 
what are the other reasons and if the if the family has only one son and he just have to take care of his ah so the so to take care of your old parents sometimes i have yeah you're right you're right right or you're getting married because you want someone to do the family business yes or there can be so many reasons for why someone wa wants to get married but uh we need to look at marriage as something that god's designed it to be and god has a purpose for every marriage that comes together okay so uh, when you look at uh, the uh, jewish wedding the ancient jewish wedding um the way that their their marriage takes place is quite interesting so uh, initially at the arrange like at the engagement or what we call as a betrothal ceremony the boy and the girl come together and they are pledged to one another all right and the boy goes back and the and the uh, the girl to be the bride to be stays back with her in her home the boy is supposed to go back and prepare a place for to take the bride so the, so this generally takes place for almost a year where the boy goes back prepares the house prepares himself to bring back the bride and what does the bride do in that one year is preparing herself and keeping herself in purity all right and what picture does this show you the the picture of christ in the church christ has gone to prepare a place for us uh, so that we can join him and we are called here to live under the grace of god in righteousness right so that's the same picture that you will see even in the jewish wedding so um the essence that we can take out from this is preparation how do we take time to prepare ourselves so all of those of you who are not married here anywhere it's it's a great time to begin to prepare yourself don't say i have still time i still have five more years six more years this is the time to begin to prepare okay all right so take this seriously and begin to um, begin to prepare so how, what we're going to look in this entire chapter are seven areas of preparation all right seven areas of preparation and we will look at each one of them in detail so the first one is to become the best you okay so often when people are looking for marriage what are they looking for they're looking for the, the the right person the perfect person you know he or she should look nice should have enough money should work well come from a good family should be spiritually mature we have many conditions no no yes right okay but more than that what are we expected to do as part of your preparation more than looking at how you can find the best person it is to become the best person is to be the best person in uh, in the in marriage so whatever you bring to your marriage uh, is something that you are working on okay so the best gift that you can give your marriage is a prepared you all right now um when we when we look at scripture we see that um yeah, you know we we do see how jesus uh, died to bring back his bride to himself okay a uh, 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 people who will be bought back will be redeemed back to him and and as we said he's gone to prepare a place for us so that and what who is at work over here right now that the the holy spirit is at work here preparing us for that glorious reunion all right so so the takeaway for us over here is preparation so when we look at preparing ourselves uh, whole holistically what are the areas that are included in preparing ourselves what are the different areas you can prepare yourself for marriage come on what are the areas you can you can take care of to prepare 
what are the different aspects of your life that you need to prepare for yes emotionally financially socially then spiritually then that's enough huh physically yes right you need to be you need to be fit not have a lot of health concerns or you know you can't walk knees are paining right you need to build yourself up you have to build yourself up in a way that you are ready to take on the challenge all right right so all of these areas are very very important and i'd like to um, kind of help you to think about this okay think of a wheel you know a wheel right now the wheel has different spokes right what happens if one or two of the spokes are broken it will bend there's imbalance it will bend right so we're also like that if we in the wheel of our lives if there are a few areas that are not functioning optimally what will happen there is going to be imbalance right so and all of these areas are equally important spiritually physically emotionally financially socially all of these are important now that does not mean that all the time we have to be at 100% but nevertheless we continue working on areas that are uh that are difficult or weak for us okay so becoming the best you so i want you to take a minute or two to reflect on which aspect of your life needs work is it physical spiritual emotional financial social take a minute to think thought yeah okay anyone likes to share oh that's difficult no to an extent it is all aspects but the degree the variation varies okay it cannot be like you know one area it's like yes i'm fully fit or fully ready in this area yeah all areas but the frequency or the the degree uh, variation maybe. definitely yeah. it could vary so so the idea is to focus on like for example if you physically if you don't exercise at all right or you you have no schedule of sleep sleep whenever you want to is that going to help in marriage let help in marriage no right or uh, socially if you decide you won't talk to anybody you'll sit only in your room is that going to help no right so all of this matters okay all right so we'll go to the second one your emotional health and uh yeah students thank you online please please keep your uh interactions coming yeah thank you lucy daniel you are you're bringing out very nice points all right keep keep it going your emotional health okay um so when when you're getting into marriage uh, what is what is a great part of marriage that you a great part of yourself that you are bringing in is your emotional health right yes we as a you have a cover what is your cover your body is a cover but there are many things inside of you that will come out during your marriage which is as part of your soul and as part of your spirit that's what's going to come out in marriage so when you get into marriage it is important to be in in good emotional health if not very good at least optimum good emotional health okay and how do you how do you know if you're in good emotional health give me an example of how you know you're in good emotional health depends on your mind space is it? it reflects on the mind space and the vibe the smile the moving about okay maybe your it, behavior it reflects on shows, the outside your yes, behavior yes. shows what is it, going on probably inside okay it reflects on the outside what, what are the ways when you think positive lucy says when you think positive okay others asapu ha huh? 
What does it mean to say that to be in good emotional health? When you're always happy, that means you're always in good emotional health when you're happy. Okay, that's one way to know. What else? Your attitude, okay. How you manage your emotions? Yes. So when someone says something to you that could make you angry or that could make you sad, how do you manage your emotions? Having self-control, okay. Right? You can... Uh, we can react in very many ways, no? We may, we may get angry, shout, scream, and then say, I'll never talk to you again. Okay? That shows that there is some little little mistake in the emotional health, isn't it? Right? So it matters how we, we control, we manage and regulate especially our emotions. And our emotions come a lot from our attitudes. And we will be looking at that in chapter uh, 4. Right? But it is... Look, many of our emotions affect our behavior. Okay? Can you give me an example? Okay, Deepu says, smiley faces, being active, good attitude, being happy. Uh, how do you define emotion, good emotional health? Yeah, we're going to come to that, uh, Daniel. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So what was I asking? Ah, how do the emotions affect your behavior? Generally. Well, Correct. Yeah. So what how what you do say or do on the outside actually reflects what is happening inside, right? Okay. So it is important for us to really understand um, our emotions because negative emotions can cause significant difficulties in marriage. Right? If you are always angry, if you are always suspicious, if you are judgmental, if you are um, if, if you are always feeling stressed, it affects the marriage. Okay, or if you are very manipulative, uh, if you are if you are cunning, if you are deceptive, it affects the marriage, isn't it? So we need to look to see what our emotional health is. So if you look at um, page twelve and thirteen, uh, there are some negative or unhealthy emotions that should be addressed before marriage. Okay, and I'm going to quickly quickly read them out. Okay, it says outbursts of anger, depressive and being emotionally vacillating as against being cheerful, unable to handle stressful situations where you don't have enough of strategies to manage your emotions, you're being critical and judgmental, there's negativity and pessimism, guilt and shame, insecurity, inadequacy, lack of self-esteem, self-worth, emotionally dependent on parents or other people, being self-centered and having unhealthy independence where you're not willing to discuss or collaborate with the other person, jealousy, pride, being controlling, demanding, assertive, always wanting your own way, being manipulative and cunning, unforgiving and calculative, selfish and stingy, deceptive or secretive, suspicious or untrusting. Okay? So do you see that these are more emotional states? Okay? And being in this kind of an emotional state definitely can cause difficulties in behavior because our emotions affect our behavior and every decision that we make going forward. Okay? So there may be some... So I'd like you to quickly look at that that list and, uh, you know, evaluate for yourself what are some of the emotional struggles you have or emotional challenges you face, all right? Because that will tell you what you need to work on. That will show you that this is not healthy in your relationships, especially in marriage, okay? So take 30 seconds to really look at that list and say, okay, what is the emotional 
uh, space that I really need to work in. That you keep fluctuating. Yeah. OK? All right. So um, when we're looking at, and I want to answer Daniel's uh, question on what is good emotional health. So good emotional health is not that, that we may not display any of these um, emotions, but it is uh, how you manage these emotions, how you temper them, and how you work towards responding in a way that is helpful for the situation for yourself as well as for others. All right, so we may see these traits in us, but it is how we can consciously become aware and uh, take on the attitudes that Christ talks about, right? So it happens only when you, you are aware of whether you're angry, whether you, you're suspicious, whether you're too sad, or whether you have too many mood issues, or whether you just isolate yourself, it takes a little bit of awareness to understand. So that's why I asked you, look back at that and see which are some of the areas that you may need to uh, work on. OK, so once you have recognized it, that is something that needs to be addressed. OK, you cannot walk into marriage as an angry person, right? Because that can completely destroy the relationship. Right? Or you cannot walk into marriage feeling always suspicious about your spouse, okay? that they're always going to cheat on you or that you can't trust them. It may be because of probably earlier emotional issues you've had, but that all needs to be addressed. And that's what it's talking about, addressing every kind of emotional issues. All right. OK, so so it, in order to become one, it is important to recognize and understand your own emotions, your own attitudes, your own behaviors, as well as understand the other person, OK? And being able to work with each other and support each other through these situations, OK? So what are the first two areas? Good morning. Becoming the best you, then? Emotional health. OK, so we're going to look at, OK, someone saying, how do we control ourselves being authoritative? OK, so I think the first and foremost, uh, thank you, Lucy, for that question. Um, how do you control yourself from being authoritative? Like we said, we need to understand and be aware that we are being controlling. What does authoritative mean? It is to being very controlling, bossy, dominating, right? to know that we are in a situation where we, we could probably tend to be extremely uh, domineering. So when we understand that, I think to ask ourselves the question, why do I want to boss over people? Why should I have the last say in things? Or why should I have things in my way? Right? It's often good to ask ourselves that question and learn and understand what could be reasons why we experience that it could be there could be hundreds of reasons why we feel the need to boss feel the need to dominate okay and a lot of people do actually blame the others and say you know i have to dominate because they won't listen to me and that's why i need to dominate right but that that's not the case the case is because you're you're probably exerting something that you want to see for yourself which when you don't get you need to throw your power over them. So understanding that helps you to step back. And also having a perspective that, you know, every person 
should be treated with kindness, should be treated with, with the free will and the freedom that they have. So understanding that sometimes can help you tame down from being controlling. Okay. All right. We're going to the next quest, next one, personal management. Okay. Now in personal management, um, this is, it's, this is a very important part of marriage. Okay. Marriage is just not about, uh, finding the right person. It's also managing what a home. Yes. Managing your home. And does that need some understanding and some skill? Yes. Okay. So uh, personal management is how you manage your responsibilities around your home. What are the responsibilities around a home? Day-to-day -day activities. What are day-to-day -day activities? Asapu, what's day-to-day -day activities? Huh? What do you, what is, what do your people at home do? Yes, yes, cooking, cleaning, there is no machine, no? Somebody is doing it, right? Cooking, cleaning, what else? Huh? Household activities. Wash, washing clothes, yes. Then? Taking care. So there are so many things, isn't it? Right? And if you do not know how to do this, what will happen? Huh? Collapse. Everything will collapse. Right? Yeah. So we, so is this only, is the third point only for women? You sure? Everybody sure about it? Prem? Is the third point also for women? It's only for women. Personal management. Who all should do this? Both men and women should be prepared to handle a home. Okay? Yeah. All right. So what are some of the things that we look at? First and, first and foremost. Okay? So career, what are some of the things that we need to uh, keep in mind is before marriage, is there some direction in my life? Is there some purpose in my life? Am I doing something to, to utilize my skill? Am I doing something to work my hands? Uh, am, I, am I being occupied meaningfully? All right? Getting into marriage without a meaningful occupation can lead to a lot of, sorry, disaster, right? So ensuring that you are doing something, either a job or a profession, or maybe maybe it's even ministry, okay? But being involved in, uh, in this. A couple of questions you need to ask yourself is, uh, would you just take new jobs before marriage? And something that we uh, we generally recommend is not to get too many changes at the same time when you're getting married. Why? Yeah, your focus will be divided, right? If you're going to go to a new job, you're going to a new place and the marriage, there are so many things that you have to take care of. Now, these are all stressful in itself. So doing one thing at a time, okay? Even if there are any changes that you want to make in your career, a way of preparation is discussing that with your with your to be uh, to be spouse all right that's that's quite important okay uh, other other questions of where will you be working will you be working from home or will you be working outside home and if you're working from home there should be set guidelines on work timings so this what happens Today, everybody is very sleepy. Weather? Huh? Yes. Already prepared. What happens? There's no boundaries, no? Yeah, so that, that you can keep working the whole day and then, uh, or, you know, get up late and not take care of the home, all of that. So it, it can, So these are some of the things that you probably need to be prepared. Also, it's uh, it's important as a guideline that um, 
uh, you know, you stay together for marriage and not be separated too long due, because of an employment. Because a lot of kind uh, uh, situations of uh, difficult situations arise, maybe like extramarital affairs all come in when the separation can be too long. The temptations there, so to be careful not to get into some of those. All right, uh, Gudino, do you have a question? You can unmute and speak. Yes, sister, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was, uh, my question was uh, regarding the anger management of the spouse, you know. Sometimes uh, they have this outburst of anger. Like, mm -hmm. how do you manage this anger? Okay. So this is... So one is, yes, I think it is important for every person to reflect on their own, what are some emotional uh, situations that they can be in, right? It needs to be a personal commitment to work on some of these anger issues. Um, but there may be some people who don't even, don't even realize that they have anger issues. And they go about blaming the other person saying that it's because of you or it's because of my wife or because of my husband that I have become ang that I am angry. But anger all can always be a detrimental factor for in marriage. And that's why it may be important to seek help, to seek support, to seek help, especially if it affects the marriage uh, significantly. It's uh, you know we may not be able to go into the details of how one can anger mar uh, um, manage anger. But it's it's important to get help, uh, Gudino. Okay, All right? thank you, sister. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next one is finances. Okay. In finances, it's important to uh, understand one how you manage your own finances. How do you live within your means? Are you uh, you know personally? Uh, are you doing a good job of budgeting your money? So I'm sure all of you get money every month from home. Right? It's a good test to ask yourself, how am I managing money now? Are you in debt by the time it's the 10th of the month? Are you asking money from somebody else? Right? If that is so, then you need to go back and check what am I doing wrong? Right? Or are you overspending uh, a lot? Or are you not spending at all? So much so that you don't eat, you don't, uh, you know, you starve yourself so that you, you save up money. All of that are unhealthy ways of, of handling money, okay? Uh, and how much are you, are you growing with the principle of honoring God with your money? That is maybe tithing, whatever money that you get, giving one-tenth of it to God, okay? So that's a practice all of you can begin to build right away, even now. Don't have to wait for a time to do that, but doing it with the little money that you get, okay? Also having a right attitude towards money. A lot of uh, couples, when they get into money, they get into money with this mentality. My money, your money. Right? You bring 50%, I bring 50%. Right? If we are buying a sofa, you give 50%, I will give 50%. Right? That doesn't sound right, no? Because we, you are called to be one. What is yours is hers. What is hers is, I mean, what is his or hers. And vice versa. So it is to come together that whatever you're bringing together is together. So that issue of money, you, you really need to build your understanding about money when it comes in marriage. Okay, All that you that y'all own is yours, not his or hers. So coming together with that. Okay, Also understanding financial goals. What are you... What do you have, you know, what is your uh, planning about, uh, about money? Uh, where is it you want to invest? Where is it you want to save? Okay, let me ask you this. How many of you saved now? Okay. All right. So what should you start doing? You need to save. Okay, this is the right time to begin to save. So something I, something, um, you know, the first time that I started, I didn't work. I was a student, but I used to get a stipend, small stipend. 
uh, my food was taken care of, my uh, lodging was taken care of. But then you, I used to get as part of where I was, I was studying. You used to get because we used to see patients and things like that. So I used to get some money, and I used to make it a point in the beginning of the month. Two things I would do: I would give for tithe, and I would save. And then I will have a little bit. Uh, this is I'm talking about 20 years ago. I may have I think thousand rupees, and but I would have to manage with that. Why you are looking at me as if I'm from another planet? Okay, so so when you begin to do that, you know it will become like a practice. These two things, right at the beginning of the month, if you do, it's there. So you need to budget your rest of the thirty days with whatever money you may have, thousand, two thousand, whatever is your money, and say, okay, this is all that I will take. So then I I wouldn't go by auto. I would take the bus because I had to save. Right, so these are some sacrifices that you make, which is very good, which actually helps you to understand what life is life is about. All right, okay. Uh, the other things is being in debt. It's if if so. Sometimes you may be in debt because of some loans you've taken, but then these are some things that you need to discuss beforehand because a lot of issues with money tends to become a big problem. In marriage, right? So discussing, um, uh, you know, that that there may be debt, or you know, that you have to pay off the debt, and uh, the other person also, your spouse, being prepared to help you through that. Okay, all right. So what were the two things we discussed about finance and career? All right. The third one is time management. All right. Now, as a single person. Sometimes you don't have to really bother about your schedule, no. No, sleep when you want, get up when you want, eat when you want. Correct, no? Okay, but will this work when you get to marriage? No, right? It doesn't. So, actually working on a schedule, right? So. The very fact, if you look at how God made nature, what happens in the morning, like at six six thirty, who all wake up? Uh, no, no, I, I meant I meant in creation, you will see the birds and the and the butterflies and the sun. Everything is up, right? And when does it all go down? In sundown, right? By six thirty seven, everybody is winding down. Right? If you change the clock, what will happen? Everything is going to go haywire. All right. So, look at how God's created it and bring your schedule to something like that. You know, so because that also helps in marriage and relationships. You know, people who get up early are able to have breakfast at a time. You know, get to work on time, not just scrambling. You know, getting up at ten o'clock, one quick washing the face, eating one bread, and then walking out—all of that causes issues. So, go back and check your schedule. This is the right time for all of you to do it. Most of you are single, right? A right time to do that and build it up. Nelson, okay, all right. So, schedule, maintaining those schedules on a daily, weekly basis. All right. Next is. Your consistency of, with your devotional time. Do you take time out to spend time with the Lord, uh, to read Scripture, to pray, to speak in tongues? Is that something that you have developed? Okay. Other things of making sure that you're in church uh, regularly, serving in church, uh, doing doing that. You know, so that again becomes like a. Uh, like like something that that is as part of your life. There isn't a negotiation on that. Other things of time management is punctuality. When you say you will be on time, yeah, not five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour late, being there on time. What does it show about you when you're on time? You're valuing the other person. You're committing to uh, to to honor the other person's time. Okay, so ensuring that you are punctual. Then also being able to maintain your life, whether it's work uh, and family, 
how are you able to maintain each of this, all right? So this all has to do with time management. And the last one is household skills. Okay, so this is a very difficult one for many of us. Cooking, cleaning, taking care of uh, dishes, clothes, ironing, keeping your surroundings clean, paying the bills. Okay, how many of us know how to do at least one? Little, little. Okay, so it's a good thing to learn right now. Diksha? Nothing from you. Didn't hear, didn't get any messages from you. Okay, so it's a good thing to learn now. How many of you, how many of you know how to cook? Little, little. You can survive, no? Ah, you can survive. Uh, yes, Abhishek. I know, Daniel, I know all of these. Wonderful. Yes, uh, Warren and Abhishek. Yeah, if you'd like to ask a question, please go ahead. Unmute and speak. Right, so these are important things to know. It, it's just, it's just uh, being responsible for your own selves. Don't expect to be served, right? But serve. Okay, and especially I'm, I'm talking to all the boys here. Okay, to because I know we grow up in homes because I have a son also. So we grow up in homes where our mothers take care of, of everyone so nicely that when they get married, they don't know how to manage at all, right? So th these are important skills, especially because in our time and age, both the husband and the wife work, and you can't expect that only the wife comes back and does double duty back at home, right? So sharing responsibilities is a mature thing to do, okay? All right, so personal management, quickly, what, which area would you all like to work on, on career? Uh, are you telling me what personal management is? You want to work on career? Oh, okay. Others? Huh? Work-life balance. Vimal? On your schedule. Sugas, yes. Sugas, right? Yes. Sugad. Rupas. Ah. Sugad, yes. What about you? What do you want to work on? Huh? I'm just getting all my students to commit here. Yes, Sugad. Prem? What about you? Huh? Time management. Komal? Time. Bless you. What skill? Household skill. Which one? Huh? Cleaning. Okay, easy. You can start here only. Rupus. Huh? Cooking. Cooking. Okay. Nelson? All of this. Oh, wow. Diksha? Huh? Career. Uh, Akil? Huh? You said work life balance. Okay. You wouldn't say, waiting for you, Sugad. Okay. Andrew says everything. Lucy says time management. We can add driving. Ah, very good. Yes. Very important. Learning how to drive. Yes. Huh? Who said that? Daniel. Daniel said. Okay, so the, I mean, I'm I'm serious, sir. I'm seriously talking. Just as much as all of you all are working on your spiritual growth, these are equally important to be good witnesses. Okay, to be good witnesses. All right, Asapu. All right. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, Nelson. Among this, what are the works that the girls look for more? What are the work that the girls look for more in boys? I mean, what are the work that yeah. girls do, or what are the work girls should do? The girls look. 
I I didn't what follow. Is, he's asking what are the uh, among all of these things that we have discussed. What are the things that actually a girl looks for in a guy? A girl looks for. Oh ho ho. Okay, this is a very difficult question. There's only Deeksha and me as women over here, and maybe some women here. So, uh, and Nelson wants to uh, wants to know what are the some of the things that the girls. Good question, Daniel saying. What are the good good? <laughs> what are the things that girls look for in these skills? So Asapu says household skills. So a boy who knows how to cook, clean, wash, uh, is very attractive. Okay. Any other thoughts? Even the online students, maybe the married ones can say. Sam, looking for your expert thoughts. What else? I don't know. No one's answering anything. Okay. So, so Lucy says all of all of these things. Even uh, Gudino says all the things that a woman does. Uh, a man should also do being supportive in all of the things. Okay, so actually, it is sharing. You know, when when uh, at least the way that I see it, I think just a, a husband who shares life with me, whatever the 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 things is, whether it's cooking, cleaning, taking care of the children, all of that, sharing responsibilities is a is a needed thing. Okay. And that's why it's good to know all of this. All right? OK. Any other question? We just have two minutes before the break. Any question? Any questions from the online students? OK, Sam says, someone who's a good listener. Someone who's a good listener. OK. Mike, Mike Nelson. We see sometimes means uh, there is work in home, and wife wants me to do, but at same time, I am I don't want to do. So how I will express her that I don't want to do? How I will just okay. Sometimes it's like I don't want to do this work. I don't want. I don't like doing this work. Is it? I like, but sometimes no. Sometimes I, I don't want to like, do it. Yeah. Legendous okay. because also how I will just manipulate her. I don't know. How you'll manipulate <laughs> I like the question. How will I manipulate her? <laughs> okay. All right. So what would you do, Nelson? How would you tell someone you don't want to do work? I uh, don't know. You have to convey, OK? Convey in a sweet way, OK? Don't make it a habit. Yeah? Yeah. I think you, sh you can convey that you don't, maybe you're not in the right mood or right frame of mind, or um, maybe you can do it later. But I think it's important not to keep do that as a practice. You know, Maybe the first two times, uh, just after marriage, she may say, no, 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 I'll do everything. Don't worry, you sit and rest. But after that, that's not going to be the case. You know? She will expect you to, to do something also. OK? All right. Any other question? OK. All right, we'll, we'll uh, stop here, and we'll come back in 10 minutes.